How's it going guys, it's Jiggy here, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at something in functional programming called first class objects. We're going to take a look into what a first class object is, and their role in functional programming. So let's get straight to it. As you may remember from our intro video, we took a look at what a function is, what a domain is, and what a codomain is, and how we can apply a function in order to map a value from the domain to a value in the codomain. Now we're going to need to look at how that concept is going to apply in a programming context. So far, you've probably written tens or hundreds of methods and functions in your chosen programming language for your A-level. Essentially, a functional program is made up of many of these. So where do first-class objects fit in? First of all, let's define what a first-class object is. A first-class object is any object or value that can be passed as an argument to a function or any object or value that can be the result of a function call. They are also the variables involved when assigning values or expressions. At a low level, first class objects may be integers, booleans, floats, and any other data type, since these can be passed in as arguments to a function and also be returned from a function as its result. If we had a function which can return the mean average of two numbers, we would need to pass in two arguments, which could both be integers, for example. Those two integers would both be first-class objects. The number that is then returned could be a floating-point value, and yes, that would also be a first-class object. If in the function itself it assigns a variable with a value, that variable is also called a first-class object. Now let's talk about more abstract examples. Another first-class object can actually be a function. This means that functions can be passed in as arguments and returned as a result of another function. This might be a little bit confusing, but this is where something called higher order functions comes into play. So, what exactly is a higher order function? A function that handles other functions as arguments and results is called a higher order function. Let's take a look at a typical higher order function in functional programming languages that we'll come across. Let's say you wanted to write a function which multiplied each value in a list by 2. In functional programming, we don't actually have support for loops such as for and while, so we have to handle this by using a higher order function which can take the times by 2 function as a parameter and also the list of values. The higher order function that we're going to use is called the map function. You can think of the map function as a keyword in a functional programming language since it's actually built into the language itself. So how does this map function work? Like we said, the map function is going to have two parameters, the times by two function and the list. What will happen is the times by two function is going to be applied to the head of the list. The head of the list will be the first element, which is three. That's going to output six. After that, the map function will make a recursive call on the rest of the list, which is called the tail of the list. So, multiply 2 will output 8, then 10, then 14, and 16, since we apply multiply by 2 to 4, 5, 7, and 8, respectively. So you can see that the map function is going to apply the times by 2 function to all the elements of the list. So let's have a quick recap. When talking yourself through functional programming material while you learn it, ensure that you refer to things as first-class objects and make sure that you make that a habit. You must be precise when you're doing your exam and you use these, this terminology. We also learn that higher-order functions can accept other functions as arguments. And finally, when we use a higher-order function, the function that's passed in as a parameter to it will be applied to the head of the list and then a recursive call is made on the tail of the list. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.